how old do people think you are? Oh man, uh, <laughs> like 15, 16, 17. Uh, I got carded at Wendy's one time because they didn't believe my age. At Wendy's? Yeah. This is definitely the latest interview I've ever done. I mean, if, we, if we're being honest here, it's uh, 12.15 in the morning. This is technically yeah. Thursday morning. Yes. But we just got back from AEW Dynamite, the first ever here in D.C. D.C. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm really beat up. Yeah? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm a little sore, but I feel very overwhelmed, I guess is a good word. That's a good word. Um, being out in front of like 15,000 people for that the crowd first. crowd is hot. That, that's the first time I've been in front of 15,000 people. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, wait, how many people were at? Yeah, something like 14,000. Yeah, yeah. 14, 15,000. Like, how many people were at All Out? It was um, like 12, huh? Yeah, something so, like yeah. that. Yeah. It was like quite a few thousand more. Yeah. But it's uh, it's super exciting to be able to be a part of like such a historical thing. You know, it, it's been so many years since like there's been, I guess, competition and like i feel like we're definitely bringing the competition we have some of the best talent in the world yeah so did you feel that energy as soon as you walked out there oh man i mean it doesn't matter that it was like after the show the crowd was still hot like oh and the they, crowd they stayed have, till yeah. the very end yeah they were so energetic and so like i don't feel like i i got left out on anything i feel like they were still behind us the whole way and yeah like, I don't think a single person left. No. Which was amazing. I didn't, I, I didn't see in many open seats at all. Yeah. Like, there might have been like a few, but nothing that you can tell on camera or anything. Yeah. Oh, man. What a feeling that must have been. Yeah, of course. When did Jurassic Express become a thing? Okay. So. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay. All right. Well, like. Originally, it was supposed to be just me and Jungle Boy, or Jungle Jack, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they had Cody had hit me up, and I broke my leg back in November. So, and I did it all in and and whatnot. You broke so, your leg wrestling? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'll talk. We can talk about we'll that. We'll get in into bit. that, sure. Yeah. But I broke my leg, and and I didn't think they wanted me. I was, I mean, I'm relatively new. A rising I guess Relatively new in the rising scene Sure Whatever And then Cody hit me up And he was like Hey uh, You gonna be you gonna, you gonna be good by March And I was like Yeah <laughs> Or or I'm sorry May May It was yeah. May Not sure. March It's two M's Whatever But And I was like Yeah of course I'll be ready And I wasn't But <laughs> But they He hit me up And he was like Yeah uh, Do you have any uh, Interest in Teaming with Jungle Boy And I was like Sure I love Jungle Boy, and he's like, "All right, cool. I think we'll have you doing that uh, after we after we get done with All Out." And I was, or uh, I'm sorry, Double, double or Nothing. nothing. Yeah, double yeah. Or nothing. Yeah. And um, I was like, "Wait, you mean for like AEW?" And he's like, "Yeah, you want to work for us?" I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> I was like, "It's like my dream, bro." Yeah. But, How did Cody know that you you know who you were? Um. Okay. So I. There's a company called Game Changer Wrestling. Yeah. Uh, I did the show Lost in New York last year. Uh, Joey Janela's Lost in New York. Right. And I originally wasn't even supposed to be on that. Brett Lauderdale, who's the who uh, books for it and promotes it and everything, he uh, he hit me up for a show, um, which was the show after this one called Live Fast Die Young. I was originally supposed to just do that one, and somebody got hurt, and so they asked me to come come and do Lost in New York. And man, when he sent me like the graphic, I like was like, no way, he's joking, he's lying, <laughs> because I knew that show was gonna be huge. I knew like they had so much going on, and I, I I keep up with indie wrestling, and I know that they're the hot stuff right now. Yeah. So like, I was like, yeah, I'm there, yeah. I'm there, and I drove 17 hours there and back. Oh my god. So for an opportunity, and I I wrestled a guy named KTB Kyle the Beast. He just goes by KTB now though. Um, <laughs> Uh, and it blew up. Like, that, I came out of the crowd. That was the, pardon the pun, that was the game changer for yeah, me. Yeah, it was. That literally changed everything for me. I mean, um, it it got me noticed by Cody. Cody 
saw me do my satellite code breaker deal that I do, yeah. which is wild, which I can't hit anymore. Hold on. What do you mean? I don't think I can hit it anymore. I like, you know, respect for Chris. Yeah. All right. Not, not you, Chris. Yeah. Chris yeah. Jericho. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. But uh, he popped for that and was like, hey, who's this kid? I need to get him for all in. I'll, and uh, and uh, I, he hit me up. I had a, I woke up the next morning from a text to a text message from him, which was absolutely nuts. Yeah. Like Cody Rhodes is texting me. What? But he's like, hey, is this Marco Stunt? This is Cody Rhodes. I was like, yes, it is. <laughs> he goes, hey, man, uh, are you interested in doing the Battle Royal for All In? And so that's what got me noticed by them, yeah. I think, originally. Wow. I think that you know, you're so unique when people see you in the ring for the first time. Uh, I mean, not just because of your size, but just the way that you work as well. Thank you. You have a very like unique movement with the way that <laughs> – you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. I try to I try to stand out. I try to not be like I don't want to be like I don't want to be the next Rey Mysterio. I don't want to be the next Spike Dudley. I just want to be me. I want people to know me for me and I want to have like certain characteristics that people hold on to and remember years down the road and I want to be like one of those legends that people book at these indie shows 30 years down the road. <laughs> I don't know if anyone. I don't know if anyone ever wants to be the washed-up legend down the road. That's I would getting booked. love it. Okay. Well, actually, you know, if I can get to the level where I don't have to, I mean, that would be cool. Well, that'd too. be cool too. Yeah, yeah. But you know, it's always in the back of my head. Hey, that'd be cool. Well, you named Ray. You named Spike Dudley. Are those guys you looked up to, or you know, it could be anybody? I, I actually, uh, growing up, I looked up to like Big Show, Kane, Undertaker. Yeah. I Seriously? Want, yeah, dead serious. I wanted to... I think that's actually what helps me now. I wanted to be seven foot tall. I wanted to be 500 pounds. I wanted to choke slam people, throw them around. I thought that was the most amazing thing, and it. I think it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. That's like the one thing that you can't work hard for in life is height. Yeah. Tell yeah. me about it. <laughs> Have you always been short? Yeah. Um. Well, I was... I was supposed to grow a little more, but I didn't. What happened? Uh, apparently, I hurt my growth plate in my back. Seriously? So, yeah. I, uh, um, I don't remember what I did though. I think, I guess it was just like sports over the years. Really? Stuff. But uh, they said my growth plate had been hurt, and so I couldn't grow anymore. Like I was supposed to have like two or three more inches, but. So how tall are you, officially? I am around five one, five two. Okay. Um, and how tall should you have been? About five five. Okay. I, like I, I also have scoliosis, so that doesn't help either. That probably doesn't help when you take bumps either. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> are, are, is everyone else in your family short? Uh, my mom is like 4'10". Oh, my God. 4'11". Wow. Yeah, my, but my dad's six foot. So. Well, you got screwed. I did. I did yeah. not get my dad's jeans. I wouldn't fit in them if I did. So. <laughs> but a nice dad joke there. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, You're good welcome. stuff. What I, like you were so you were short your whole life. Yeah, like yeah, you yeah. were the kid that had to you know in the class photos you were sitting at the front instead of standing in the yeah, back. Always, hmm. I didn't hit a growth spurt really until mm, the end of eighth grade. Okay, so you hit a growth spurt from how tall to how tall? I was probably, I was probably uh, four seven. Okay. And then I, I, I hit 5'1", five, 5'2". Five, and then that was it. I, I haven't grown since. I haven't, I haven't grown since ninth grade. So. Oh, I'm really sorry. That's oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I... Man, your hair was stuck to the mic there. How, old, how old do people think you are? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> like 15, 16, 17. Uh, I got carded at Wendy's one time because they didn't believe my age. At Wendy's? Yeah. Yeah, oh. Wendy's. What is Wendy's carding people Yo, for? Okay. I live in a town where, like, it's just whatever. You can talk to people however you want, I guess. Or, well, they think you can, you know? But uh, I was in the drive-thru with my brother in school. had just gotten out for, for, like, spring break or something. And they're like, and the lady, we were ordering Frosties. And, uh, uh, you need to be a certain age to order those. Yeah, yeah. I know. Apparently they spike them. No. They, but she, we pull up to the drive-thru. 
and uh, she has our Frosties, and uh, I pay for it, and she gives give me my change, and she goes, so are you boys excited to be out of school for a little while? And I was like, well, I've been out of school for like three and a half years now, so, and she goes, excuse me? <laughs> like, her whole demeanor changed, and she just stared at me for a minute. She goes, boy, you are lying, <laughs> and I was like, no. <laughs> She's like, let me see your ID, and she like would not give me the Frosties until I proved that I was my age which what yeah that's probably the most wild experience i've had with the age thing what happens when you you know try to go to a bar or something like that oh i mean i get i got carded five times in one night yeah i only had like two drinks but like so you were in so you got carded to get in i got carded to get in Uh and then there's a couple different bartenders so each time they would walk past me they would be like excuse me can i see your id and they're probably studying it like in ten. Yeah, they were like, I had, really good fake ID. Okay, I was at a bar one time. I wasn't even drinking, but I was, but uh, I was hanging out with my buddies, and uh, dude, dude's like, you know, I can tell if IDs are fake, right? And he's just talking to me. I was like, well, it's not. I'm, I'm I was 21 at the time. I was like, I'm 21. He goes, okay. So you, so you're, so you're telling me right now, if I take this ID, it's not going to be fake. I was like. No, it's not fake. And so he starts bending it, like trying to make sure it's not fake. Wow. And he's like holding it up. And uh, I've had some wild experiences. I'm sure. Did, so. Do people like that expect you to be like, oh, I'm I'm this short or this young looking because of? I don't know. I think they're just like, it's, they're not used to seeing people like my height. And like, I guess I don't really understand because I've been this height my whole life. So I don't know what, I don't know what the big deal is. It's especially funny in AEW because you're in this trio team yeah. with the tallest guy on the roster. Yeah. 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 What a wild pairing we are. <laughs> well, you were talking about it was supposed to be you and Jungle Boy. Yeah. How did Luchasaurus get worked into this? Well, Okay, he did Double or Nothing, yeah. and uh, they signed him off that. And uh, him and him and Jungle Boy were actually already a team on the independence scene out in L.A. and stuff. Yeah. They did a bunch of stuff. They were Boy and His Dinosaur, which yeah. they still are, I guess, kind yeah. of. Um, a boy, a boy, and his dinosaur. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so they they put them together just because they were already there, and I and uh, they I was already with with Jack or uh, Jungle Boy. And uh, so I guess we just became a trio. Yeah. And it worked out. I feel like we've worked out. We have. A, I feel like we have a very dynamic team. You do. Um, we saw very, it tonight. Very unique. I don't think there's ever been anything like us, to be honest. Um, I, th- I feel like, especially, like, you guys are going to see, like, crazy stuff. We've worked on some crazy stuff, like stuff that's never been seen before. So You did some stuff in tonight's match. Yeah. It was pretty unique. Thank you. Yeah, like Jungle Boy Flipped you? How do how do you explain what that was? Uh, I I he flipped me and I, I splashed just watched him. The match, okay? Yeah, just it'll be on BR Live. <laughs> and it's gonna be on YouTube, I believe too. Is it YouTube as well? This okay. might be. I don't know if that's official or not, but I believe that's. Oh, I sick! Think, I think that's something they're planning on doing. Yeah, that'll be easier for me. Yeah, I believe all the uh, dark matches are gonna be on good. YouTube. Good, good, yeah. good. There's all the dark matches were great tonight too. Oh, the whole the, show the whole, was yeah. incredible. Yeah. Yeah, Dude, I I couldn't think. I think it was a great kickoff to what we have and what we're gonna be doing. Yeah, and uh, I'm super excited to see what else we're gonna do because I, I I feel like we're gonna be able to top ourselves, like keep topping for ourselves. sure. And like it's only gonna get better from here. Like, yeah, I mean, did did you ever imagine that you'd be in this situation now? <laughs> no, never. I uh, I was always told I shouldn't be. Like when I growing up in Mississippi, I, I was, of course I loved wrestling. You know, like I said, I watched I I, I watched the Big Show. I watched Kane. My dad was a huge fan of wrestling, so I've watched wrestling since I was around, I guess two, and uh, that's what my parents tell me at least. And uh, but no, I never thought that it'd be a possibility because of my size for one, and like I just you never see people my size yeah. or anything, and then but I. Uh, I went to a, I went to a show, a local show, and uh, got up with uh, some of my buddies, and I got up the guts to go up and ask him about training, because we were all super into wrestling, and so we all three went up to him, and they, I was the one they didn't take serious. They looked at my friend who's six five, 
and they were like, yeah, we'll train y'all, <laughs> uh, which they meant they'll train him. Yeah. And, uh, and how old are you at the time? Uh, we just, I just turned 18. Okay. So, um, so we, they gave us a price, which is a stupid price for the type of training they gave us. Now I know. <laughs> I'm like, it was terrible. I can, I can shoot on here. Absolutely. It, sure. was, it was terrible. Yeah. And then, uh, but we, I, we stuck with it. They beat us up the first day, which is, I guess, what happens around there. And um, I, I ended up having a bunch of issues with the company that I started with. They treated me pretty bad. Um, and uh, a guy picked me up that worked with them. His name was Molly Cruz. And uh, he, he is the one I give credit for training me. So he kind of like retrained you in a way. Pretty much. Yeah. I, the thing is, I only trained like once or twice a month oh, really yeah for like six months and then they threw me into a match so no so like, like a one-on-one match uh-huh so it's like well, I've, <laughs> wow i've learned on the road basically i didn't even get on the road for two years or three years wow mm-hmm. so i've only been doing traveling for about two and a half years or i'm it was about it's about two and a half years before i got into it traveling and then i then here we are two and a half years after that. Which is crazy. But so much of this is, you know, you've got to thank Joey Janela for this. Oh, of course. Yeah. Joey, GCW, Brett, uh, man, they're the ones that put me on the map, for sure. They put me on the map. I mean, you rode down here with uh, with Joey. I did. Yeah. We, uh, we had our final independent matches uh, for a curtain call, and uh, we drove down together, me, him, and Jungle Boy. We all stayed at Joey's house and uh, drove down yesterday. That's awesome. It's good. I feel like uh, I've made a lot of lifelong friends. Like, I don't, f- like, a lo- I got told, like, growing up in the business, like, growing up in the business, coming up in the business, <laughs> um, don't make friends and stuff. Like, keep to yourself. And I also got told to stay in Mississippi for at least three years before venturing out. Really? And, yeah, I'm glad I didn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> but they just... I forgot what I was saying. What was I talking about? Well, you were talking about you've made all these great friends. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I feel like I've made great friends, and, like, I got told not to, but I, I feel like it's such a different community now, like, in the places that I am now. Yeah. Where I was was so toxic because everybody just wants to do better than everybody, and yeah. I feel like where I am now, everybody wants people to succeed. Yeah. So, yeah, there was a real vibe there tonight. It's like everybody is watching everybody's matches. Yeah. That's that's one thing I've noticed is yeah. like everybody watches all the matches. Yeah. So I mean, what a great birthday present this was for you because yeah. it, right, it was your twenty third birthday that you officially got signed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't. That's, that's when I announced it. Okay, so that's when you announced it. So it was what a couple was, days before uh, that, or yeah, weeks before that? Few, it was a few days before. But I'm going to so tell you, your twenty fourth birthday is probably not going to be as good. No, no, no. Twenty two and twenty three were have been some of the greater years. It's so, all downhill. Yeah, I'm <laughs> <laughs> but I do think it's really interesting that on your Twitter, the your pinned tweet right now, you know the one I'm talking about. You basically are oh, saying, yeah, yeah. like, thank you for for being mean. Like, yeah, I mean, and I'm not like that's not me being like a pos or anything. Like, I'm like legitimately like you guys pushed me to be where I am. Like, if it wasn't for people, like being mean to me and stuff like i would not have wanted to prove them wrong Mm -hmm. you know i and i think part of it maybe it was kind of in spite but you know like they really did give me some sort of fuel to keep going and it's nice to be able to say that it all turned out well like despite the negativity yeah i mean how do you deal with the negativity because you know you unfortunately get quite a lot of it oh yeah yeah um I don't take it well at all, actually. I don't. Really? No. I'm very bad about it. So, I, so I'll so i sit on it for a minute and then, like, I'll talk. I'll, I'll be like, I'll get in a mood or something and I'll, like, start talking to a buddy and then they'll be like, bro, you have way more supporters than haters yeah. anyway. It's, it's so funny that you could have 99 people being like, Marco, you're awesome. Mm-hmm. And then That match person. was great. And then one person says something mean or negative. And unfortunately, it's just human nature. That's the one thing that you, you cling on to. I, uh, there's been a couple times I almost quit wrestling. Really? Yeah. Like recently? Um, 
I wouldn't say super. Well, yeah, this year. Wow. Most mostly because I I broke my leg in November, and uh, that just that was the most mentally crushing thing that I've ever been through. I thought that it had ended my career, and for a lot of people, I think it would have been a career-ending uh, injury. Um, I I. Uh, I did this move where I took I took a Canadian destroyer, but it was off of a stage, and uh, the door was lined. We did it through a door, and it was lined up long ways. Oh, so, yeah. so, and it was set on like a solid step, like it was on steps. So when we we overshot it, yeah. and my leg just wrapped around the oh. steps once we broke through. Did you finish the match? No, I couldn't. Sure. Like yeah. I, I wanted to. I was laying there in a whole like the worst pain I've ever been in my life, and I was like laying here and on this side, and uh, he asked if I keep going. I was like, yeah, yeah. And I was trying to think of the stuff I had to do, and I rolled over and my leg flopped over. Like you ever seen skateboard videos yeah, or like yeah. basketball videos? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's oh. exactly like that, and you can't see it on camera because we were oh. so far off the camera. So. What do you, you know, your leg's broken. You, you pro I'm assuming, don't have insurance. No. So, so oh, yeah, I did. You did? I was under my parents' insurance. Oh, sure, yeah. Under my parents' are insurance. You st are you still? I am. Yeah, until you're, you're 26, is it? Five. Or I guess seven? Like, 25, 25. I think it's 25. Just threw out three different numbers there. One of those three. Yeah, One yeah. Three. Mid 20s. Well, this is great then. Yeah, I'm doing all right. I, we just, I, I. <laughs> I just can't tell them I don't live with them anymore, or else that's yeah. a big no-no. Don't worry, we won't tell anyone. No, nobody's I, watching. I, I definitely live with my parents. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, so for, for for the people that are just listening to this on the podcast, they totally mm -hmm. believe you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't just move out into an apartment. Yep. See, mm -hmm. there you go. And, and, and get a new car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the broken leg almost like that was almost oh, yeah. the thing that made you go, I can't do it. Yeah, I was really depressed. I bet. And, uh, and, I, and like, I was actually, I wasn't abusing the things they gave me for my leg. Like painkillers? Yeah. I, would, I wouldn't say I was abusing them, but I was probably, I was probably using them more frequently than I needed. I mean, I was in pain. Don't get me wrong. Sure. But, like, it was just, I was more sad than I was in pain. Yeah. Like, um, because this had become my life. I was on such an up. Yeah. And, and, and then all. You didn't have another job, I'm guessing. No, I did not. So what'd you do for those several months sat at home i couldn't walk up the stairs so i just sat i they put a bed in the living room oh my and God. I, I was in the living room for, that's tragic yeah oh yeah. yeah it took like four months for me to get up to my room for the first time my, wow yeah it's weird seeing my room like <laughs> after so long i was like wow i haven't been in here in so long yeah but Wow. So when you look at the current AEW roster, are there certain people that you're like, I can't wait to have a match with that guy? Chris Jericho. Mm. Yeah. While he's the champion? I don't care. <laughs> I just want Chris Jericho. I want to, I, I honestly, I, there's not a single person on the roster that I wouldn't want to wrestle at, I think. Yeah. But uh, I, I, Jericho would be obviously huge for you growing yeah. up as a wrestling fan. Oh, yeah. And like, dude, Chris is the GOAT, like for real. Like, yeah. I, I think so. Um. I do think he's one of the greatest of all time, and I think, and and he was, I know I didn't, I said I didn't really look up to little guys, and I, he's a lot bigger than me actually, but um, he was considered a cruiserweight, and yeah, so yeah. like, like I did look up to him though. He was one that I watched. I liked Eddie, and I did like Ray, and I just I just don't like being compared to Ray, you know, I don't know, but yeah, Chris Jericho. I want to wrestle Jungle Boy. Really mm. bad. Oh, are we, no, are we? Not a feud. I just want to, you know, test the you know waters. You know it's going to happen at some point, it right? It better. <laughs> I, I, I imagine. So. There's going to be a feud at some point, I'm sure. That would be fine with me. I think we would have a great feud. I think that we would put on a great match, like, like a pay-per-view type match. Do you think that someone that's your size could be the world champion? Uh, I've never set a limit for myself. So I, I love it. I... Uh, I, I've proven myself wrong way too many times to set a limit now because I didn't think I could be a wrestler. I didn't think I'd ever be on TV, but here we are. Yeah, like. and what it, the the most amazing part about this is you've used your size and your stature to your benefit. Yeah, and I think there's so many people that would 
you know, use it and be like, oh, well, I could never do that because of. Yeah. I, mean, I think people do that, you know. People, yeah. They can fill in the blank there with whatever. Um, but the crazy thing is if you were 5'10 or 6 feet tall, with everything else going on for you, you might not have got signed. No, I would. You'd just be a guy. Yeah. Yeah, I would be. I, I don't even know how to, like, think about that. But point. it's true. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I, you'd I still agree. Be you. Yeah, I would be me, but I would not be Marco Stunt. Mm. You know, Marco yeah. Stunt is a whole nother like character. He's like, fun sized. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I feel like the way that I, I would, that I, I put myself in the ring and I like try to think of ways to use my body and like my momentum instead of just going out there and try to punch somebody in the face like if i can punch somebody in the face and then they can punch me in the face it's gonna hurt a lot worse and it's gonna do a lot more damage so why would i not try to like i don't know fly at them with my feet or yeah. something like or or trip them get them down to my level and then then hit them yeah i don't know so that's L- little thing but that's like very cerebral yeah. that's like a wise way to think about thank this. you no thank you. it's true you were you were telling me earlier that you haven't always lived in the U.S. No. So where were you living before? Uh, born in the U.S. Yeah, I was born. Yeah, born in the U.S. And in, in where were you born? I was born in Arkansas. I was born in Paragould, Arkansas. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. And then where did your journey take you? Uh, okay, so I've <laughs> we've moved all over. Uh, my parent, my dad was a pastor for ten years. So you're a PK. Yeah, I am. For for anybody watching this, pastor's kid. Yeah. Yeah. I am. I am. I'm one of those. And, uh, but he, uh, we moved to Mississippi, Olive Branch, which is where I'm from. And uh, then we moved down to Oxford, which is like an hour away, hour south. And then we moved to Indiana, or back up to Olive Branch. Then we moved to Indiana. Then we moved back to Olive Branch. All because he was at different churches? Yeah. Wow. And then after we moved back from Indiana, I don't, he wasn't pastoring anymore. I don't think. I don't remember. I don't think he was, though. And then uh, he felt called to go be a missionary. And so we moved to Costa Rica. And uh, Costa Rica, we learned the language there. I picked it up super quick because I was only like 10 or 11 at the time. So speaking Spanish? Yeah. I, wow. uh, uh I picked it up in about a month or two. No. That's yeah. insane. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was learning on the streets with my buddies i'd go play soccer like we had a soccer field right across the street and i would just go play with the local kids and i would pick up the slang so i didn't really learn like the technical way to speak i learned how to speak like they spoke okay so yeah, that came pretty naturally can but you still speak spanish i can speak it i can i think i can carry my own i just it's nothing near like i used to be like i stopped using it once we moved back to the states um so when you moved from costa rica where did you then move to the states uh, we were actually in Costa Rica for a year, and then we moved to Nicaragua. Oh my for god! Like two years, so we were there. My parent, my my dad was in a mission organization, and um, he would go out on teams and with the teams that would come in to these villages, which is a super surreal thing. To like, you see pictures of like villages where like it's super poor setting, and like people literally live in like. Like, there's eight people in, like, a, a house this size. Oh, wow. Yeah. And um, and it's dirt floors and, like, um, the metal panels, like, yeah, the, yeah, the ones like, with the ridges and yeah. stuff. You know what I'm talking about? Like, that's what the walls are built out of. And it's, like, it's super surreal. But we lived down there, and he did stuff with them. And I got to go out every once in a while, which was which was cool to see. I like going out and seeing different things. And uh, but we moved back to Olive Branch after two years. Being there though must have given you such an appreciation for the life that you know we live here in America. Yes, for sure. I th- I think it helped a lot. I think it helped me curve my character into who I am today because I'm I feel like I'm a generally you know nice person. I feel like I care about other people. I know I care about other people because. I can't stand to, like, be on somebody's negative side, and I can't stand to have people on my negative side. Right. It's definitely shaped me in a good way, I think. What kind of churches was your father pastoring at? My dad was a Baptist preacher. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So I grew up real, real in the Southern Baptist scene. Wow. I don't feel like that would be that supportive of a wrestling career. 
I wouldn't say my whole family was supportive at first, but they came around. Like, I didn't, honestly, like, I didn't, I wasn't real close to my family, um, growing up. I was closer to my dad's side, but, uh, even then, like, we were around, we were moving around so much that I didn't get to know him. But, like, my dad and mom were both very supportive. My dad was more supportive than my mom because she was scared for me. Like, sure. Understandably. Yeah. I've had quite a few injuries that would scare, that scared her and, like, so. Other than the broken leg? Yeah. Yeah, I've had a couple concussions. I've, I dislocated my elbow really bad. They had to put me to sleep to, to fix that once. Jeez. But, uh, no, but, like, my family's been, very supportive. We'll get these injuries out of the way um, while you're still on the insurance. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, that's important. I don't need to get hurt in in after two years from now. That's right. Yeah, no more injuries. <laughs> no for more you. injuries. No. That's, wow. You can, you know who Bill Dundee is? No. You don't know who Bill Dundee? He's an old Memphis wrestler. Oh. You should, he Prino still wrestles. Crocodile Dundee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, uh, he still wrestles at 70. I'm just going to start bumping like him and rolling. Is that what he does? Yeah, he just rolls. Like, he, he squats and rolls. <laughs> it's great. I still feel like it's very surreal as we sit here in this hotel. It's Washington, D.C. We, we just came from the Capital One Arena. Yeah. Like, it's, it just feels very surreal. Yeah. Yeah, I, I haven't snapped out of that at all. Like, and I've felt this way for, I guess, a couple months now. Like we walked out of the arena together, and everyone's like, "Oh my God, it's Marco Stunt!" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't even know how to explain how I like that makes me feel because that's like the first time that's ever happened. So I was like, "Oh my gosh!" And dude, cool. This is day one. I know, I know. It's it's crazy. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna increase. It's gonna increase. Maybe one day I'll hit a hundred thousand subscribers or subscribers, followers? followers. Yeah. Well, why don't we get you some more right now? Let's do it. Okay. Oh, you want me to tell them? Well, yeah. Oh, follow me. <laughs> and then you follow know. me on uh on on Twitter at Marco Stunt M A R K O, not C O, because everybody messes that up. And then Instagram. And then Instagram, it's underscore Marco Stunt underscore. I'll put them in the uh, description below so people can find them real yeah, easy. Be good. There you go. Hopefully sure. that'll help you, you out. You guys a follow bit. me. Yeah. I know you follow him, so follow me. <laughs> and then your people can then follow me. Yes, you guys follow Chris. And Chris's people follow me. It, Deal. it all works out. When you look ahead five years from now, what do you want to be doing with your career? I want to be a legitimate, la, 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 legitimate household name. I want people to know me like, like, oh, yeah, Marco Stunt. Marco Stunt? Yeah, we know who that is. Like, yeah. I want people to know who I am. I want to, I want to make an impact. On people. I don't think there's too many AEW fans that don't know who Marco Stunt is. <laughs> well, that's cool. Yeah, that's it's cool pretty name. cool. I I was blown away when I walked out behind you and people knew who I was. I was like, what? I was not shocked. I was not shocked for that one. Really? I figured, yeah, I figured. We, like, we walked, in all fairness, we walked out of the arena all together. It was mm-hmm. me, you, yeah. Dasha, yeah. Darby, mm-hmm. Joey. Joey, Penelope. Penelope, Kip. Yeah, like there was a big group of us, yeah. and I was like, "You guys want to talk to me?" Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's it's. Thank dope you, by feeling. the way. It's very <laughs> cool. That's very nice. It's, it's very very cool. No, it's. I think it's super cool to be able to do stuff like that. Like, I like interacting with fans. I like being able to sign things. Of course, yeah, like yeah. like like we might have been in a little rush, and I wasn't able to like stand there the whole time, but like. When I get the chance, like at StarCast and stuff, I love being able to sit down and talk to fans. Yeah. And, like, interact with them and let them know a little more about me. I think it helps in the long run when you're when you're good with your fans. Yeah. I, th- I feel like it'll help because people are going to remember that and people are going to remember who you are. You know? Well, you say that because you came from being a fan. So yeah. you understand it. Yeah. You know, you know what it means to look up to these people. You know what it means, you know, to idolize them. And now the role's been reversed. Yeah. Which is so wild and so crazy. Yeah. But yeah, now you're it's been flipped. Now you're in that position. Yeah, I've actually had a couple people tell me they're like, Man, you inspire me. I'm like, Wow, that's crazy. I don't like I don't get it. I don't I like personally I don't get it because I still feel like the kid from Olive Branch, Mississippi. Mm-hmm. That, 
like I'm still the same me I'm just doing I just have a really cool job <laughs> so but I I appreciate every single message that I get like that because it makes me feel like I'm doing something right you know who has it been backstage at AEW that's really helped you or maybe you know helped you work on your matches or something like that uh Christopher Daniels has helped me a ton uh he's really taken me I feel like under his wing and BJ Whitmer and um Matt and Nick actually have helped me a ton. I I love talking to Matt and Nick. They're very encouraging. And they're so nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was, we, okay. So we were sitting in uh their we were doing they were doing the um what's the room service yeah, yeah. and and the the shoot interview deal and yeah. Joey was doing it and I just happened to be there so they talked to me too some and uh but I was sitting in the room and I was like. I'm in the room just chilling, and the young bucks are right there. <laughs> what is going on? Like, I, look what I, as I was walking out. Oh, you took some of the money? I took some of the, the, the young bucks money. Man, I didn't yeah. know they did that, like, at it's every a, show. It's, I don't know. I think it's just the big entrances. The big ones? Yeah. Hmm. But uh, I, got, uh, I got 500 young bucks. Wow. I got five of these things is what I'm saying. You should uh, go try to spend it. Yeah, I'll, I'll try. try yeah, to spend it. we'll go to McDonald's. <laughs> I'll, after uh, this. I'll put it. I'll uh, put it up like this. Yeah, that's right. There's nothing on that side. <laughs> it's just this side. <laughs> Look, man, I'm uh, I'm super pumped for you. Thank and, you. And uh, I I appreciate you. It's almost one o'clock in the morning as we're wrapping this thing Is up. Is it really? It went that fast. Yeah, we've been talking for 36 minutes. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Wow. Yeah. I like I like it. It was easy to talk though. No, like, of course. All right, so there you go. Late night chat with Marco Stunt. Big thank you to Marco for taking the time to do that interview very late. We ended at one o'clock in the morning. Big thank you to you for watching this video all the way until the end. Although if you like listening to things, instead of watching them, I do have a podcast. Uh, it has the very original name of the Chris Van Fleet Show. Convenient that I'm wearing this shirt right now, isn't it? Uh, but I've had the podcast for about three months now. There's been a ton of support from you guys on there. So I super appreciate that. I posted today on Instagram. And if you follow me on Instagram, at Chris Van Vliet, you saw this. Uh, if you don't follow me on Instagram, let's change that. Uh, at Chris Van Vliet. But I posted today that the specific goal, because as you know, vague goals get vague results. The specific goal is to get 500 reviews on Apple Podcasts on the podcast by December 31st. And as I'm posting this right now, there's 322 reviews. So I know that we can accomplish this and I know that we can crush this. And if and when we do crush this, 1,000 reviews will be the new goal. So uh, I will pin the comment below for a place where you can listen to that, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, wherever it is that you listen to podcasts, the Chris Van Vliet Show is available there. I really enjoyed this chat with Marco Stunt. I'm so excited to see what's uh, gonna happen with Jurassic Express, with him and Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy as we head into the future because there's only been, right now as we post this video, as we're talking right now, it's only been one Dynamite, one episode of Dynamite. So I can't wait to see what the future holds for him and for everyone in AEW. And Marco's a perfect example of someone who dreamed huge. He set a massive goal and he didn't stop until it was accomplished. So. Super pumped for him. All right, big life announcement for me. Uh, this is the last uh, one of these little wrap-up videos I'm gonna be doing here in my backyard in Florida with a pool and palm trees here because this weekend I'm moving. I've sold my house here and I'm moving. I'm moving to Cincinnati, Ohio uh, because my job can really be based anywhere and we can do these interviews you know, from anywhere. So I'm moving to Cincinnati, Ohio. My girlfriend, uh, AKA current girl, if you saw the interview with Dolph Ziggler, I'm never going to live that one down. Uh, Elena is her name. She's awesome. And if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen her and she's the best. She works in television and she just got a job, an amazing job in Cincinnati. Uh, it's her hometown as well. So uh, we are heading up there. So if you are from the Cincinnati area uh, or the Northern Kentucky area, uh, you got to let me know about uh, which indie promotions to check out there. And sure, it may be a move from the leaving the palm trees behind Yes, the palm trees that are behind me, leaving the palm trees behind me behind uh, for Ohio, but uh, it's not really that big of a difference. I, well, the weather will obviously be a big difference, but I moved here from Cleveland, Ohio. Before that, I was in Toronto, so I'm certainly used to the cold weather, uh, but I'm excited about this, man. I'm excited. We're making this thing happen. So uh, if you live in Ohio or Northern Kentucky or in that area, 
guess what? We just became best friends. <laughs>